Hello everyone. This is Tech Talk Universe. 13.82 billion years ago, a singularity explosion split into two universes that were parallel and composed of opposite worlds of matter and antimatter. On April 11, 2016, strange evidence appeared to support this theory, which is not widely believed. An Antarctic impulsive transient antenna, ANITA, detected a particle that had never been detected before. Neil Turok, a famous physicist who had previously collaborated with Stephen Hawking on the hawking turok instanton theory, was the first to see the data and was shocked by it. Turok suggested that the data might indicate the existence of parallel universes. When the news broke, it caused an uproar, and people were initially skeptical but then became curious, does a parallel universe exist? Let's start at the beginning. The idea of parallel universes was not an impulsive notion. It originated from some mathematical concepts. We need to look back to 1927 when a 25-year-old physicist named Paul Dirac was invited to the Fifth Solvay Conference. In one of the most famous photos in physics, Dirac was seated behind Einstein and Lorentz, two influential physicists. Physics enthusiasts know that this photo was prophetic and that Dirac would become the next physicist to shake up the field. Sure enough, in 1928, Dirac created the first type of equation for electrons. He realized that Einstein's mass-energy equation, E equals mx squared, was not entirely correct. The correct equation should be E equals plus or minus mx squared. The appearance of the negative sign puzzled people because it seemed to suggest that matter could have negative energy. But what is negative energy? Dirac explained that matter with negative energy looks the same as ordinary matter but has the opposite charge. For example, an electron with a positive charge becomes a positron. This idea is so strange that one might wonder if a positron can rotate around an antiproton to create an antiatom. Can antiatoms combine to create antimolecules, and can those combine to create antistars, antigalaxies, or even an entire universe? Although Dirac's equation revealed that our universe might contain antimatter, it was just a mathematical conjecture that people did not take seriously at the time. Four years later, August 2, 1932, was an extremely significant day in the physics world. A young physicist named Carl Anderson announced a significant discovery to the world. Anderson was using the most advanced photography technology of that time to take pictures of cloud chambers in an electromagnetic field. One day, he was surprised to see an electron traveling in the wrong direction in the magnetic field. This electron was moving backward, which seemed impossible. Anderson continued his experiments and soon concluded that he had discovered an unknown particle with the same mass as an electron but with a reverse charge. In other words, he had discovered a positron. This meant that there was antimatter in our world, and Dirac's prediction had come true. Scientists also discovered that when matter and antimatter collide, they annihilate each other and release a tremendous amount of energy. In 1945, after the end of the atomic bomb experiments, Richard Feynman had time to return to theoretical research. One day, he decided to explain the meaning of a positron based on his understanding. He said that a positron was an electron that traveled backward in time. Time flows backward for this electron, so it appears to carry a positive charge. Feynman's explanation was profound, and most people did not understand it. How could time flow backward? We have never observed time flowing backward in the universe. Feynman argued that time could flow backward because the solution to Dirac's equation for negative energy can be viewed as a time reversal phenomenon. This was another mathematical language for solving equations. In the 1960s and 1970s, as Feynman's fame grew, his theory gained more attention. In the quantum world, time might flow backward. Physicists increasingly thought antimatter and matter were just different types of matter. When particles collide and change the direction of time, they move from the past to the future or vice versa. This leads to annihilation and the release of huge amounts of energy. Moving forward to 1990, a young physicist named Neil Turok delved into the study of string theory. 
Turok was born in South Africa in 1958 to white parents who were actively involved in the anti-apartheid movement. He had a tumultuous childhood, which perhaps inspired his deep longing for exploring unknown worlds. He devoted much of his energy to the study of parallel universes. Turok was a close friend of Stephen Hawking, and in the last few years of Hawking's life, they focused on studying parallel universes. In 2006, Turok proposed the concept of a cyclic universe. He believed that the universe was the result of the collision of two membranes in the 11 dimensions of M-theory. After expansion, the universe would shrink and then expand again, in a cycle that would never end. His predictive model was consistent with current observations of the universe and gained a high degree of attention in the physics community. Moving to 2016, the Amundsen-Scott South Pole Station, located near the South Pole, is one of the most mysterious places on our planet. The Anita Detector, a device suspended from a large hot air balloon, is located there at an altitude of 35 kilometers above the ground, where there is almost no interference from cosmic rays or other background noise, making it an ideal location for high-energy particle research. Several days later, Anita detected a strange particle that flew from the ground into space. This discovery was puzzling for several reasons. First, the particle was a highly energetic tau neutrino, which has weak penetrating power and theoretically should not be detected from the ground upwards. Second, this neutrino was not left-handed but right-handed. Humanity has never discovered a right-handed neutrino before. Finally, this was the third time in two years that Anita had detected this type of strange particle, indicating that it was not an isolated phenomenon. Four months later, the Anita research team published a paper on their findings on NASA's website, and scientists got excited. When Neil Turok saw the report, he believed it was a discovery that could not be ignored. If parallel universes exist, perhaps that mysterious universe is sending us a signal. Turok created a mathematical model of a CPT symmetric universe, where two universes were created at the moment of the Big Bang, with opposite charges, parity, and time directions. Turok believed that the neutrinos detected by Anita were not from our universe but from its CPT symmetric partner. The right-handed neutrinos were because the CPT symmetric universe adhered to the law of conservation of the universe, and all neutrinos were right-handed in that universe. The neutrinos rose from the ground because their motion was backward in that universe, and in that universe, neutrinos were shot from space to the ground. These two points also proved that time was flowing backward in that universe. There's a lot of evidence to support this hypothesis, and it quickly made headlines in Europe and America, with many media outlets reporting on it. However, people became excited but also raised an obvious question. If parallel universes exist, why can't we see them? The answer is quantum coherence. Nobel laureate Steven Weinberg has an excellent analogy. He likened parallel universes to radio waves. Although there are two types of radio waves in our space, when we turn on the radio, we can only hear one frequency at a time. This is because at the moment we turn on the radio, the other frequencies undergo decoherence, and we can only receive one station at a time. According to Weinberg, the parallel universe and our universe exist in the same space. Parallel universes are everywhere, even at the tip of your nose. However, we cannot feel them because they are not on the same wavelength as our world. Only the mysterious particle, neutrino, can cross two different worlds under the influence of gravity, bringing us information about parallel universes. This is Turok's complete explanation of parallel universes. But does a parallel universe exist? No one can give a definitive conclusion. However, the concept of parallel universes can bring endless associations to people and arouse their curiosity. Since parallel universes are about time reversal, can we time travel through them? Can we achieve immortality by traveling between two universes? And can we find the answer to the meaning of life in parallel universes? That's all for today's program. This is Tech Talk Universe. See you next time.